All right, guys, we're going to jump into game four here, and it's not going to be Ravage. It's going to be a Protoss named Sony. Two or wins, sunny. though, or Sunny, except it, it's it's definitely an O. So I'm thinking Sony, but it's think Protoss versus Protoss. I, I think it's Sunny. I honestly think it's Sunny, but you could call him what he like. It's my team. I'm a representative of Sonic Cast Master, so totally not... Uh, not biased at all. So I'm going to call him Sonny. You can call him Sony by all means. Okay. However, we are spawned into this game here. And we do have spawning in the top right-hand corner. Representing Risen, we have Fight Some Crime. You introduce the second guy. Oh, okay, of course. And representing Psionic Aftermath, we have our blue Protoss player. He is Sonny. Yes, sir, and it looks like we're going to get gateway openers from both players. Now, high-level PvP, this is really the standard thing. You don't see much deviation at all. Perhaps at a lower level, you could see a forge opener and a cannon rush, but these guys are too good for that. Not really going to see any of that. Uh, interestingly enough, there is a small deviation already. By some crime is electing to build at the top of his ramp as opposed to by his nexus. I'm not 100% on the reason for this, it's it's often just a player choice, but we did see him in the last PvP player played, game number 2, he went for it just compact in base next to his Nexus, maybe he's worried for some fo form of cheese, some Zealot Rush, but he's yeah. just going to go for the same build as per usual, he's going to go for that two gateway there and he's probably going to make those stalkers out of it and it's going to go for the very similar game that we had in game number two i hope we see some more blink play because this blink micro is actually pretty crisp especially whenever you have to micro against immortals it can be so hard so as we see pretty much mirroring builds i have time to talk about something that a lot of players already know which is the advantages between building your stuff by your main and building your stuff at your ramp so if you build your stuff by your main, of course, the main pro to that is that the build time and the probe move out time is just significantly shorter. If you want to get your gateway down, boom, the probe that you have to build it is right there, right where you want it. Now, another advantage of this is if you use camera hotkeys, which I would suggest you do, and if you don't, but many high level players do use camera hotkeys over their bases. That way you camera hotkey back to your base, you see all your production, now the advantage of building your production at your ramp is if you do get cheesed and there is some sort of bust play on or kind of like a flood play where there is focus on getting up the ramp, your buildings can obstruct that and prevent that from happening. But a twilight is already about to be finished from Fight Some Crime. Uh, this is very interesting. We both have, we have both players going for this adept play, the double adept play, and both players are going around each other. Neither of these adepts groups have actually met each other. We are only going to have a mothership core on either side to help defend here. Yeah, and we're going to see phase shades go into the base to fight some crime. And oh, wow. Sunny just completely stops that one like a solar eclipse. My goodness. No damage going on there at all. And great, great micro there from fight some crime on the back end of his base to wall in and prevent the phase shades from assailing his main. Now, they are even in workers. However, Fight Some Crime is going incredibly quick DTs behind this. There is no third and fourth gas, and his natural is under somewhat of a duress position because Sonny is just going to kind of troll around here down low. Another beautiful wall off from Fight Some Crime. So this is another reason why you wall in at the top with your beginning gates, is you can add a pylon for a full wall. Yes, it's so many advantages to having on the, the high ground there. However, it is a lot more susceptible for against stalker damage. If there were stalkers at the bottom of the ramp, they can shoot up and start taking down these warp gates and are a lot more vulnerable to that early aggression as and well. Vault, he's gone straight to Immortal, has Sunny. He didn't expect this quick DT. The walling off was so excellent. Okay, and Obs is on the way. And Obs is halfway done. This is so huge. Oh shit, that's the yellow player. I was wrong. Okay. Pylon is being attacked here, my bad guys. And the Immortal comes out here and it goes down! 
is oh, no. the yellow player is going to be able to ravage the mineral line here as the pylon is about to come out. All he has to do is focus that pylon and no detection will be able to come out. Another pylon does finish. Oh, beautiful force field there to prevent the DTs from killing that pylon. The OBS is about halfway done. The workers have been transferred to the natural and one of the pylons is going to die. Thankfully for Cyax, he didn't get supply blocked, but Sunny has brought the Adepts back. The DTs are ravaging, but thankfully we get an OBS here. And if we go to the units tab, our boy fights some crime. He's up 11 workers or so. And if he had microed these DTs, actually, I think he's trying to focus this Nexus. I think he's trying, he's gonna kill the Nexus here, Volt. Look at him oh trying God, to kite back. Yeah, he's gonna give it up. He doesn't, oh, he's dealing with the DT in his main. He was so focused with dealing with that DT in his main that he didn't defend his natural. Now he has a ton of workers, way, way too many for one base. And our boy fights some crime is way, way ahead. He might even be able to get a clean sweep here if we look how many workers he has and how much income he has, man. I think so. Those DTs just cr uh, forcing suddenly to crumble here. He's just falling to bits under the pressure of those DTs. Sonny did so well defending against those adepts. He cut them off in the blink of an eye. However, those TTs, completely different story. Such a clutch hold there. It could have ended it all right there and then. And they're just able to hold, but at some expense. The expense of his, nat uh, his natural base. Yeah, and I think there are a few things to note. First... First of all, Sunny is going to re-expand. He did have quite a few minerals. Notice that he made a couple gates and was able to re-expand. So best of both worlds, I suppose. Plus one's on the way. Blink is on the way for the yellow player who's going for an all kill, fight some crime. And the blue player is posturing for an attack, Sunny. And he has a warp prism and an obs. Part of the reason why that build works so well is because of the pylon constantly being made and remade to try to ensure that the vision was blocked and the DTs were a surprise. Of course, the proxy pylon being exceptionally close was another reason why it worked. And Immortal being the first thing that Sunny built would, I, would be the third thing. I don't so, know if this is going to be enough, though, as we do see Sunny move up the round with only a single Immortal, a couple Stalkers here, but Bison Crime just has a lot more good force fields going down, cutting off a lot of the army there, focusing yeah, down the Immortal, good uh, War Prism Micro there. And Bison Crime is fighting with less than half of his army, this is a, like an extraordinarily inefficient police academy or police force, where he's only fighting with about half his units, and those Immortals especially were very suspect and absent. Now, the Sunny with natural some... just finished for Sunny though. Yeah, godlike micro out of Sunny though. He's able to use up War Prism, so effectively lost more or less no forces while cutting off half of fight, uh, uh, Fights and Crimes' own army there. The War Prism does go down there, and with more good force fields, this is going to turn out way better for Sunny than it originally should have, considering the War Prism went down right at the beginning, which is often a death nail, and he calls it! That's the all kill! Fights and crime going nuts on the Psy X boys. Oh man, Risen absolutely crushing today. This has just been fight some crime league. This says we don't care about anyone else. It's just fight some crime versus everyone. Yeah, and fight some crime really put the hurting on Psy X today. Every single game he went for an aggressive build, they put him in the driver's seat, and he went for a variety of builds, you know, DT, Speed Zealot. Straight up blink. Blink with a third with the warp prism and then finally DT rush. Now, early on in the game, that fourth game, the rubber match, we were talking about, okay, he's doing this thing where the two gates are at the top of his ramp. Maybe he wants to play more defensive or prevent scouting. And we saw incredibly diligent pylon building there to prevent scouting. And when the, D when the adepts tried to phase into the main, nope, wasn't happening. And that meant that the DTs hit extraordinarily quickly, caught him off guard. So great play there from Fight Some Crime. Absolutely insane plays there. He was able to just hold on against those uh, adepts with beautiful walls and constantly didn't lose anything, didn't lose a single probe to that mothership core, just constantly beating down them. Not quite as good defense as Sonny had, but still very, very masterful there. And he was able to follow that up with heavy... Uh, DT play there. Absolutely crushed, Sonny. 
Yeah, it was a clinic. I mean, when you all kill a clan, especially in a best of seven, you had to be doing something right. And we saw Fight for Crime really put in work with the aggressive builds today. And I, I do want to make the distinction. He wasn't flipping coins. He wasn't doing like, well, I guess I'm going to hide my tech in the top right of the map. And if they see it, then I lose. No, he was doing things that had backup plans. Even the games where he didn't really take a third and was playing very aggressive and committing a lot to his aggression, a lot of it was just dedicated on his multitasking, his ability to fly around with warp prisms, his ability to harass and use spellcasters effectively. So to be quite honest, I really like the play from Fight Some Crime today, Volt. I really think so. In all four of the games, he's been able just to crush. He's able to take down every one of the weaknesses in each of the players. Game one, we had Sight going for that late game style. In comes Fight Some Crime with this big mid game style. Uh, Zalat DT her, uh, all in here, absolutely crushes him. He tried so hard to defend. He had some really good bio micro. However, there was just so many Zalat, so many DTs. So it was hemorrhaging bio and wasn't able to do much. Game number two, PVP, we had the blink uh, stalkers. It was just so many stalkers there, able to jump right on top of the immortals, take down each and every single one of them. And in game number three, it was another PVT and. That went very similarly. We we just saw heavy blink uh, harass there that just went straight on top of all the defenses. It was so immobile and crushed everything again. Game before, as we were just saying, DTs, they made the game there. It was able to take down the natural, take down so many workers as well. Nearly take down the robo bay there, that, uh, so the robo facility that was producing the observers. Just, as you were saying, absolute clinic in how to take down a top level clan like Cyanic Aftermath. So that was a great, great performance from Fight Some Crime. He's going to get the all kill in the Hope Team League. And if you're interested in my commentary or my casting, I make YouTube videos, Venomous Stare, and I stream on Twitch, Venomous Stare. Volt, why don't you plug your stuff, homie? Alrighty, I cast uh, for my clan Sonic Aftermath pretty often, and I also cast for Proxy Tempest on the EU side. I cast every Wednesday. Uh, for the Proxy Tempest EU Open. And I also stream myself whenever I get the free time on twitch.tv slash vault. All right, we're going to throw over to our production guru, Felipe, one of many. And there's a lot of people behind this Polygon production. They all do a great job. Felipe, what do you have for us, homie? All right, I just want to say a couple of things before we close this out. Once again, go ahead and check out those um, things that our casters told you about. The Venomous Stare has an amazing YouTube channel. I've seen it. It's pretty awesome. It's a great place to go if you want to improve your play. Same thing with Volticus. His casting over on Proxy Tempest. Now, before we wrap up what ended up being just uh, Fight Some Crime versus the World, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Maturino once again because that's an amazing place y'all can go to help fund this team league. There are still a few more days left of the matches. We are going to continue the round robin on Tuesday, I believe. Um, and then those jerky offers are still going to be open. We are at $225 in donations for our prize pool and we would love even more support and the players would appreciate it too. So with that, I bid you all farewell. Be sure to join us once again on Tuesday night. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.